Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Red Dusk. I'm your host, Mr. United Arab Republic's lover. But this guy named Saddam, or Saddam, proclaims the United Arab Republics. After Iraq's recent military victories against Kuwait, Syria, and Iran, Saddam has declared the eternal enemies of Arabs dead. He subsequently declared the new United Arab Republic in front of a crowd in Baghdad. The newly unified Arab state has been congratulated by a number of pan-Arab politicians and sympathetic individuals from other Arab countries. The Soviet Union's leader Boris Pugel congratulated Saddam for achieving a unitary Arab state free from Western imperialism, suggesting closer relations between both countries. NATO denounced his development with its press speaker saying that there is almost no freedom in that country. Eh, what does he know? Saddam. In a later speech, denounced the certain Arab countries for keeping the Arab people divided and saying that the justice will be brought to them. Will it be successful this time? You bet it will, as we invite pan-Arab intellectuals. To continue our research in the military and social fields, we need intellectuals, such as scientists, doctors, and so on. Therefore, the government has decided to invite Arab intellectuals from the country into the government. It will not be an easy task to lay the foundations of a new united Arab world, but thanks to our qualified and brilliant intellectuals, thanks to our formidable and capable, pol capable politicians, and above all, thanks to the leadership of the great Saddam Hussein, we'll be able to build a new homeland for all the Arabs of the world. So, which is fantastic. Some comments include, hope you play as America and go for the third choice. Eventually, hopefully, yes. Um, someone else says, ah, oh, yes, Saddam, truly the savior of Iraq and soon the whole Arab world as well. And someone else asks, is this mod complete or is it just kind of like being you know, an incomplete experiment? An incomplete experiment. Yeah, eventually, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to get slowly updated through stuff. So, But we have management of the United Arab Republics. So this, estimation of stability. At the moment, different events might influence us. Having low stability will cause terrorist attacks and higher resistance. Not ideal. And the unification of Arab nations, that it has been disunited for so long, we need to centralize a new Arab state, Arab state and connect the new acquired state to Baghdad, which would improve the efficiency for governance and unity of the state. 30-day 30 30 report or lose stability, centralization, progress. Oh, yeah, terrorist attack. That's not good. Oh, we definitely need to integrate these places. We need more compliance. Um, social programs. When removed, overall monthly stability increases by 2.5%. And more daily compliance gain seems pretty good. Monetary policy, huh? Baghdad Damascus Highway Project. Uh, seems like a pretty good idea. To truly unify the two regions of the United uh, Arab Republics, we'll be constructing a highway that connects both the highly populated cities to improve both citizens' transport and administrative purposes. Uh, well, increase construction and lose consumer goods factors, but get more construction speed. Well, I guess we'll go with that one. Divert resources to centralization effort. Our monthly centralization progress increases by 1%, but our month overall monthly stability decreases by 5%. Monthly centralization goes up. Well, we probably need that. Add to terrorist operations. Hey, better compliance. Better compliance. Uh, resistance growth speed. Monthly overall stability increases by quite a bit. Expand social programs. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Finishing the Baghdad Damascus Highway. All the following must be true. The railway connection between Baghdad and Damascus. Effects in a couple days. Oh god. When failed, centralization increases. So we need a railway or connection between Baghdad and Damascus. That's not bad, so we have what we have here. Baghdad. Which one is this one? Damascus? Yeah. Alright, so we got that going. Hopefully it goes well. Um, and we have a terrorist attack, which has control of the Iran to NCRI. After a great and formidable victory over enemy Iran, the government together with Saddam has decided to transfer the conquered Iranian territories under the jurisdiction of the NCRI, or Iranian collaborators, who have the task of stabilizing the region and restoring the image of Saddam Hussein as a liberator leader of the peoples. Uh, they have to then build an everlasting friendship between the Iranians and Arabs for proper for its future. Terrorist attack, oh boy. Modify the Constitution. Modify the Constitution to help with our other like-minded intellectuals to better fit our uni unified pan-Arab state while still ensuring total loyalty. Today, a group of terrorists detonated a bomb in the city center, causing damage with fewer people getting injured. This will show the overall stability of this nation's law with opponents of the regime gaining power. We should work towards improving our stability before it's too late. Yeah? Centraliz centralization is getting better, which is good. But still. The United Arab Nations is pretty good. Hey, weekly manpower? 750? That's not terrible. We're getting there. But happy August, everybody. A unified Arab military. Ooh. Erasing Assad's legacy. I'm okay with that. Before fully integrating Syria into the Union, it was completely eradicate the Assad legacy from the territory and by the ideology of the population. Bashar al-Assad and his father, Hafiz al-Assad, and uh, are a problem for us even as dead because their nationalist and anti and Arab ideas are rooted very deeply in the minds. Other people and hinder us from the integration of the Syrian territory. 
and instigate the population to revolt against us. We must move on to eradicate, eradicate now Bashar's family and their ideals from Syria. What are we missing here? Planes, self-propelled artillery, and fighters. Uh, 1960 self-propelled. Wait, don't do any more? Oh, maybe self-propelled anti-air. Well, that would do it. Well. Maybe we don't have any anti-air. Oh, look at that. That's not good then. Who's using it? Anti-air companies? Can you switch them to this one? Oh. That's not it. Infantry. Um. Motorized artillery is not looking too good. Maintenance, maybe? What are we not getting? Are we importing fuel? Why do? We... Oh, it's from them, the Arabs. Uh huh. Makes sense. Oh, here's welcome. After years, Masoud Rajavi is finally in Iran again without fearing for his life. He had been thinking about this moment since his failed revolution in 1979, since the founding and CRI and been allying with Saddam since the Gulf War and the last victory was with, with was his with NCRI being put in charge by the Order of Saddam himself. He walked up to the microphone on the stage and spoke to the crowd that gathered in the square, dear citizens of Iran. After years of struggle, the Islamic dogs have been finally defeated, their feudal resistance has been curbed in Iran after years under oppression is free. How is being under Saddam freedom, you Sunni puppet? A man from the crowd yelled following the rest of the gigantic crowd chanting anti-Saddam slogans against the new administration. Our brothers in Khuzestan have been brutally occupied and forcefully deported by Saddam and you're turning to a blind eye to it, you traitor. Violence quickly escalated and the crowd soon attracted or started attacking the barricade that had been separated them from the Rajavi. The Rajavi's request for silence had been muted by the loud chants of the crowd, and at last, the police intervened, shooting at the crowd with bullets and quickly dispersing it. The days went away with few casualties, however, the scars caused by this and the Rajavi and the Iranian people's trust for him in that day will forever fade away. Oh, unified Arab dinar. Ooh. The government decided to use the dinar as only an official currency in the UAR. This choice was made to keep the population feel more united under a single flag. And which are no problems to trade. The choice of the dinar's currency will also be very useful for the trading with the other countries in the Gulf. Makes sense. Uh huh. Do we have Cass? Fighters. There you go. And what do we got here? Expand social programs. Let's decrease it by 5%. I don't want to decrease it anymore for now. 30 day report. Oy. Not good. Another terrorist attack. God dang it. This is destroying us. Divert resources. Well, the progress is not bad. Stability changed by negative five percent. What are we supposed to do here? Well, we could do stuff here, but twenty three percent, twenty six percent. And the Yugoslav. Oh, after months of test fighting, the Yugoslav civil war has ended. Oh, what would happen here? Anti Yugoslav rebels won. Um, weren't they going to do really well? Hmm. Well, that's not good. Everything is sad, like a which we just read. A unified Arab military. With the founding of the UAR and consequently the annexation of the Arab countries bordering with us, the problem of the poor organization of the army arose, in fact. The majority of our soldiers feel discouraged in serving the army because, due to the nationalist ideals, was eradicated in Syria. Uh, many of them see our government as an oppressor instead of a liberator. Therefore, Saddam decided to reform the army. Let us reform and make the entire military feel more united in a sense of mutual brotherhood. From soldiers to marshals, we are all of Wada Khriya Ishtarakiya. The long journey we have traveled has finally come to an end. Saddam Hussein, a great leader, has finally managed to implement and finalize all his policies. 
has managed to build a great homeland and have guaranteed the Arabs a new home thanks to unity, freedom, and socialism. Saddam's actions, like his image, will be remembered for centuries, if not forever. All he did for us, the Arabs, will never be forgotten. Glory to Saddam Hussein, glory to the UAR. So, unfortunately, we got a little bit of a problem with uh, political power. Now, we can core stuff, which is great. And we got the railway done, too. But we have no political power, which sucks. And this is destroying us right now. So, I don't think we can get out of this hole right now, which is really bad. Um, so, yeah. Facito. Anti-terrorist operations, I mean, we could try it still. Just balancing out our stability, which is nice, but like, we can't compete against that. So, yeah. It's not good right now. Not good whatsoever. We need some cast as well, but. Kind of half tempted to not even do any focuses, because we have no p political power at this point. That's so why we're doing this one, so we can get this 100 more political power. Get something here. It's pretty darn bad. Rocket already, sure. Uh, reconstruction of the economy. I would end the conflicts with Iran, Kuwait, Syria, and so on. We needed to focus on rebuilding our civilian economy, which was almost exhausted by all these armed conflicts. With this rebuilding, we'll begin with old war damage factories back in operation, both the Iraq and the ones we got thanks to the wars. We'll build new ones in Iraq and the Pan Arab territories. Now, I'll finally have a chance to bounce back, become one of the strongest economies in the Middle East. Honestly? Mm, it's not hurting our political power, so I'm not going to do another focus for a while now. Because we really need to get rid of all these negative uh, stuff here. Finish monetary reforms. This would be good to do too. Because we keep getting freaking terrorist attacks. Oh, maybe not. 37.5? 17.5 centralization is coming along very nicely though. Uh. Monthly. Let's do that one first. Because we continue burning all that stuff up. <clears throat> With nearly three a day, we're gonna start increasing this stuff. So when selected, monthly centralization progress decreases by quarter. And when removed, you gain core, and it goes back up. So we're gonna do that. Start coring more things. Or just coring things in general. Nice. Anti terrorist operations, good. Don't wanna do that one. Tag Nguyen incident? Alright. Ah, very nice. People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Nice. And expand social programs, more daily compliance, overall stability increases. Let's go to that one next. Yeah, I'm just going to bum rush this part, because we might as well, right? Good. A sense of normalcy. With Iraq becoming under getting a, under a embargo for years and an economy and daily life of citizens mostly just into this new normal, causing the effect of the embargo is mostly wear off. The benefits of a planned economy. A planned economy undoubtedly is the best way to govern the economic plan of every country. After taking control of the Pan Arab territories belonging to us, Kuwait, Jordan, Syria, etc., by adopting the system, we've noticed an ex exponential growth in the GDP and a general improvement in the economic plan and in state revenues. Now, having connected most of the major city centers, oh look at that, on the newly conquered Pan Arab territories with Baghdad in these regions and mainly under in urban centers such as Damascus, there's been an economic growth, and above it all, has not occurred only in the city but also in the whole region as well as Kuwait, Jordan, etc. So, Saudi Arabia. More compliance or overall multi stability. That's pretty good where we're at right now. So that'll be good to do too. Domestic goods sector. We'll establish a new sector on domestic goods that oversees food, clothing, farming production, and the newly acquired states. Uh, but look at that. Uh, to use their potential for the, to the fullest for the good of the country. And centralization completed. Look at that. According to recent reports, local governments across UAR have started to be more loyal to the central government. But well, the unified Arab, Arabic identity is slowly forming as well. We can safely say that our centralization efforts were, that we envisioned when the United Arab Republics was first declared has been officially reached. Three cheers for Saddam! Ah, so I didn't know that earlier. Great! Only 95%, but not really. Mm, yeah, we want fleet and being. Foreign policy? Oh. Indian Civil War. Well... I kind of want to see what's going to happen first. 
So nothing revolutionary, though. Desert. Oh, comes rebellion in there too, huh? Nice. Whatever. Got any tank weapons? Yes. Uh huh. So you can do that, maybe. Yeah, that's only one division in a circle, but it's better than nothing. Ibrahim. Do this and go to there. Very nice. Amma Adabad. Dozens rocket artillery, nice. It's not looking good. I'll hold it for now. Recover. Let's see what you can do here. It's good. Should be able to do that there. Boom. The comments are doing quite well. Uh huh. Well, 135%, 95% month of progress is getting up there. I like what's going on up there. Increased propaganda resources? I think that's okay. Why not? Got a sense of normalcy. I think it's really worth it. Self-propelled anti-air, huh? Transport helicopter maintenance companies, definitely. Marines might not be bad to have. That's a template for garrisons and whatnot. 27 is pretty good. Nice job, guys. Uh huh. Yeah, we'll give up more uh, roads and whatnot all, all around here. I'm building up so much more fuel. Wow. Gotta love owning parts of the Middle East. Build up with those guys. I can also use more rubber here too. Oh, more bombardments, huh? Happens. I'm going to cup of decaf coffee here too. There you go. There you go. Uh, could you actually win here? It's pretty mountainous, so it's pretty bad if I hear. Korean DMZ, pretty normal. Interesting. Ah, we found the Americans. Well, we got the south and the north from each other. Nice. Future lives in the military. I think so. Ah, continuation war. Nice, good stuff. East Asia Treaty Organization, the next step. 
The internal stress and divisions within our state have been quelled, and with the matters of political foolishness, ideological dissent, and economic malaise all being handled by the professional work of our glorious Saddam Hussein. Now we must change our directive, not to, to, to economic development or political strengthening. Not from frugal, nothing frugal like that. Nor our aim shall be conquest, expanding our borders, liberating the lands of Arabia from the clutches of Western imperialism and Zionist Satanism. This crusade will not be easy, not at all, but it will be swift, for all enemies of the state shall meet their own unique form of justice one way or another, and Iraq shall bathe in the riches brought by these expansions, as we're going to have an economic crisis pretty much here. It ain't going to be ideal, but whatever. Great is your more million shall bleed. Very nice. Taliban, Taliban takeover. Partial mob. Nice, we're looking very nice here. Keep building ourselves up, that'd be nice. Except propelled 70s, artillery. The next step. Oh, deal with Al Hussein. Currently, government is a possibility of integrating pan Arab territories without any kind of armed conflict. The territory in question is that of the region of Jordan. Their leaders offer to help us integrate his own motherland into our country in exchange for leaving us their king, Al Hussein, and his ruling position without interfering in the mon monarchy of Jordan. By accepting these terms, our motherland will acquire new territories and will be another step towards the realization of his pan Arab dream. Uh. Are we going to invent anything to do anything here? Global economic crash. If you want to do this, please go ahead. Yeah. I don't want to touch that. Oh, we get more weekly stability. I didn't realize that. We gotta fix this soon, man. It's bad. It's not good. Oh! I'm gonna back the Indian communists. Ah! Oh, I said over here we can do. Crisis? I've read this before, so if you've been to this place, go ahead. Boop! Welcome back to India, which is on the other side now. Well, it looks like there's no one over there now. Do they de completely demilitarize? Okay, then. They need a revolution. A third social superpower? Political turmoil. Oh, into China. Interesting. Okay, then. Uh, centralization has to get better. Uh. So, I'm going to save the game and see what happens. Hopefully we can go to war with Jordan and whatnot all in all of them. Oh, the Republic of Iran looks normal now. By an outlaw leader. Uh, huh. Harsh fist talks to the public. I think we need a harsh fist. It's 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 all the the Jews doing it to us, yeah. And then there's oh, oh end of the war. Pakistan won. Well, I guess communist Indian forces won. Why would we choose Pakistan won? We're gonna this place good head, as well as uh, please, so a pub, the pub, public liquidate assets, alternative trade partners, road to recovery, and we did it out. There you go. You know, looks like China's mostly winning there. Wow. Very strong.
The Great Middle East War. Star of greater state reaches the golden harbors of the eastern Mediterranean. The Grand Sire of the trade above those in Egypt, Lebanon, and a nation torn by religious quarrels shall finally be brought to order by the rifles of his soldiers. Though not pose as much resistance as their past enemies, as they have been economic down to for quite some time now, demonstrating a bountiful harvest for us in the upcoming year, which will further prepare a range for the invasion of the Zionists. Nice, we got more cores, which is nice. Uh. I can go to war of them. Because I do want to go to war, but still. Like when? Is the real question. Hopefully, we don't need more political power, really. I just want us to build. Okay, nice crackdowns, police public. Or we do it for them to go to war with us, maybe. I'm not sure. Tank is good. Future lies in the military? Of course it does. Um, I'd like to go to close economy. Uh, liquidated assets? Maybe I do some funky stuff here. Maybe I need to go to war with Saudi Arabia first, perhaps? Maybe? I really don't know. Let's see what happens first with all this other stuff, too. Oh, hit an army debuff. Public policing, at least. Ninety-eight percent. Liquidate the assets. Alternative trade partners. Who needed these consumer goods and whatnot? Oh, do we build the supply base ready? Nice. Let's build all this stuff. We're done within a few weeks. All right. Uh, EATO. Oh, they actually won. That's the first time I've seen that so far. It's kind of cool. The liberals have won. Korean unification. Wow. Road recovery. of the West. Uh, road recovery is good. And wait it out. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see, maybe. Invading Saudi Arabia. Before we can invade Israel, we need to consolidate the region around us, the Middle East. Saudi Arabia has gained total control of the lower peninsula after the defeat of the South Yemen and the Yemeni Civil War. That's why the invasion against the Saudis shall continue and commence immediately. 
So down one, which just randomly appeared, so. Great Middle East War, I guess. There we go. Uh, after rising tensions between the regional powers of the Middle East, the United Arab Republics has declared war on the Saudi Lion States. Oh, we have nothing here. That's not good. Um, tensions between the Saudis and the United Arab Republics was at all time highs after multiple border conflicts and Baghdad demands for Saudi Arabia to be aligned with Baghdad, which were obviously declined by Riyadh. As Saudis and soldiers pass the borders and engage, it seems Saddam wants to scare the Middle East for an eventual war with Israel. But what about the oil? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we seem to be doing all right so far. Uprising in East Turkestan, oh boy. 43,000 died already. 46,000. Islamic Emirate of East Turkestan. Abdul Haq al Turkestani. Uh, I don't know what else to use here. And we're doing quite well against the Saudis. Ah, oh, last struggle. At 4.35 a.m., my name is Qasim al-Ahmad. I'm a 19-year-old Iraqi soldier. I was recruited for military service. It's my first conflict I fight. Luckily, I've never been alone either in the recruiting barracks or on the battlefield. My older brothers always kept me company in the cell hole, what a generation calls the golden age of Iraq. His name was Mustafa al-Ahmad. Today, today is one of the last, if not the last, battle we fight here in Saudi Arabia. That is, the assault on the capital. I would admit that I've never been scared like this before, but I'm hardened to know that my brothers watch my back and better rest for a couple hours. 8.22 a.m. We're in the motorized division. <clears throat> uh, lines of Terket, or Tekret. We're sitting in the back of the transport truck, and our company is headed towards Riyadh. They're capital, I'm scared. I still feel my heart's about to explode, of course. Brother, come tell me. We've done it before. Don't worry, Mustafa, my brother tells me, seeing how I feel. Do you remember what her father used to say? He asked me with a very confident look on his face and a smile. Strong and courageous, Allah is always on the side of the righteous. Fear not. He completes the sentence, putting his arm around my neck to hug and hold me tight. My brother always gives me security, and even today he was no less. 8.32 a.m. Ten minutes have passed since the last time someone opened his mouth. It's almost time. Oh, what a triad. I hope I'm saying right. 8.40. We have arrived. The city's deserted. No enemy soldiers. Just us. Just don't like, I don't like the silence at all. Um, more minutes pass. I, my brother, and other men of our division are advancing through the city with caution. Uh, Kasim, have you seen? Nothing to worry about, like I said. Yes, Mustafa. What a relief. And after the moment I complete the sentence, a grenade lands at my feet. Uh, Kasim, my brother, yells, kicking the grenade away and pushing me to the house, one of the houses, saving my life. Uh, ambush to cover. One of the soldiers of our platoon screams, taking cover at my side, while my brother's in the house next to the one where I hold up. 9.10 a.m. There are shots, screams, and explosions. I haven't seen my brother for half an hour. I'm very scared, but I'm taking courage, and I'm doing my best to defend myself and the soldier by my side. 9.20 a.m. I don't hear any more gunshots. The last Saudis are retreating, my partner and I watched intently, not knowing what to do. It was at that moment when I decided to go out. There's nobody. I quickly ran to the house next to the one I was hiding in before, the last place I saw my brother. Upon entering, I saw there's an Iraqi soldier who had bled to death, and next to my brother with a single but precise blow to the stomach. Mustafa immediately walked over to him, sitting next to him almost in tears. Ha, ah, Kasim, brother, we made it. Mustafa, at this point I was already crying, seeing my brother dying. Kasim, he says to, with me, to, to me with difficulty, panting and spitting blood, be strong. Got it, brother? I understood. I tell, I look him, I tell him looking in him in his eyes. Promise me, Kasim. Promise me, brother. He tells me before closing his eyes. I promise you, brother. The fall of Riyadh. Riyadh. On the start of the Arabian campaign, the day was almost eagerly awaited, and from the onset, it seemed as a matter of time, given Saddam's confidence in his army, and so it was. This day marks the fall of the Arab capital, Riyadh. After a long, intense battle, troops managed to capture and put an end to any hope of the Saudi people to win the war. Now we have to keep moving forward into the Arabian desert to squeeze them even more and wait for the stubborn Arab government to come before our boots. Just a matter of time, of course. Very nice. And now we can do a deal with Al Hussein. Get in there, guys. You've done a great job so far. Better tanks? Yeah, we should probably get some better tanks. Our tanks aren't very modern. Beautiful. Oh, come on. Woo! We've only lost 10,000. We've done a really good job with this campaign so far. Very nice. Well, negative 43% factory output, that's not bad. Conclusion of the Great Middle East War. 
Strong those that participated in the nation that emerged triumphal was the UAR, from Iraq, led by Saddam Hussein. As victories led to immense changes to all the borders of the Middle East, Saddam's UAR decided, in Baghdad's peace treaty, to rewrite the borders of the entire Middle East by annexing all the nations of the Arabian Peninsula, including Yemen. While the anti-Baghdad United Arab Republic's base in Egypt has fallen to deep instability after losing the war. Now for the Middle East, a new era begins, led by one only leader of the Arab people, Saddam Hussein. Actually, for the new state, do we get uh, a way to integrate them? I think that'd be great if we could integrate them. But perhaps that is just me. Counter operation fails. Oh boy. Security forces coup Chinese government. Well, it's already police states, but still. You look, don't look very happy. Uh, no unique opportunity for China. That sucks. Military administration of North Korea. Reconstruction aid. Huh. And then, put living under the sea. Oh, they just are like, yay. Holy crap. We're not going to have enough tanks, but that's alright. Scum of the Earth. Having completed the conquest of the pan Arab neighboring territories of Lebanon with a military invasion and those of Jordan with a treaty made with the government, what about? That? We can finally begin to lay down the foundations for the greatest plan in all of Iraq's military history the conquest of the illegitimate state of the Middle East, Israel. The state of Israel, the enemy of Iraq, and of the entire Arab people. It is coming to meet its fate. Willed by Allah Himself, once our plan is finished, Saddam will finally be able to fulfill the promise made years ago. I swear to God, we'll let our fire. Eat half of Israel. Tank weapons, nice. Look at all these shiny tanks we've got now. These things are expensive, though. Connect supply lines after the recent integration of the newly conquered territories of Lebanon and Jordan. We must connect and establish a supply line of the population, and especially the army in these regions. Once this plan is completed, the, our units in the area and in Iraq will experience several benefits. It will allow the ground unit more supplies in case of conflicts in the area, faster travel throughout the region, and Iraq in limited attrition, if not present at all. It will take us a few weeks of work. Oh. I think we're looking pretty darn good, aren't we? Happy July. God dang, we're lacking so many resources. To get Jordan, Lebanon. Just in case. No matter how much we prepare, no matter how long we've trained for this war, Israel holds one key to advantage over us regardless. The power of the atom. No matter how much they deny this truth, they know it to be true. They hold multiple nuclear wards in their arsenal of destruction, which do not hesitate to use against us in the event of a war. In order to counter us, we must make a presentation of strength to show our might and just how far we've come in all our conquests. We shall detonate our new first nuclear warhead in the Jordanian desert, just on the border with Israel so that they can fully see that they have met their match in the Arab deserts. Forced draft in order to fully and truly eradicate the Mongols in Tel Aviv, and the rapidly approaching war for Palestinian liberation. We will need every single one of the sons, true sons of Iraq, for they must be fully dedicated to the cause in order to fulfill the sacred duty. From the streets of Baghdad, the plains of Nukayam, all shall be recruited into the army, willingly or not, shall they serve. Our propaganda ever shall uh, ease this process, as less of the youth of our nation will be open to rebel against these orders and ready the air force. Well, the nation's armies are primed and ready for the up-and-coming crusade against the Zionist scum, our enemy's most diabolical weapon, ties in its air force. The Israeli Air Force has become a terror upon the Arab Arabian people, seeking havoc ever since their founding. We must be prepared to counter this threat and swiftly eradicate it. Utilizing some of our spare funds, we shall heavily invest in our Air Force budget, as well as training thousands of new cadets in the Air Force, taking models from our Soviet and Chinese allies abroad. We can only hope our, that this is a proper capability to strike down this threat at the beginning of the war, otherwise our army shall be reduced to rubble. Saddam is such a man for the youth, obviously.
They were pretty good though. Death to Israel. After all these years, all these conquests, all the Arabian lives lost, we are finally ready to vanquish the worst enemy that's come to the Arab world. We shall spare none of the Zionists in this grand crusade of the Levant. Their false temples of worship shall be burned to the ash. Their homes will be turned to rubble in the thunder of our guns, and their streets shall run red with their tainted blood. Every single Israelite will be punished, pushed ruthlessly to the sea, for they shall feel the same fire and fear that they render unto hundreds of thousands of Muslims. Not a truth of the culture, religion, or heritage shall remain, for they too shall burn in the fires of the crusade. Death to Israel, death to Zionism. Sounds like a political statement to me. I can't wait to see this month, this video months from now and have it like struck on my channel. Oh, look at that! The Israeli government has been sabotaging the Iraqi nuclear program for years. Friendly they might use a nuclear arsenal on them, but it appears that they weren't able to stop them. Today, multiple nuclear shockwaves shattered across the Arabian Peninsula, with many fearing imminent nuclear holocaust. However, Saddam Hussein announced that the shockwaves were created by a recent nuclear bomb test, and that his country is now in possession of several nuclear warheads. The world now lives in fear of Saddam using the warheads against Israel, as the tensions between the two countries are rising by the day. A nuclear, another nuclear power enters the stage. Ah, so those are your WMDs, Saddam. Should have showed George Bush that. But sabotage behind enemy lines. As our brave soldiers in uh, battle of the Zionist cowards in front in Palestine, we must make use of connections with the loyalists within the enemy territory. Pro Iraqis, Islamic extremists, Palestinian nationals, all can be recruited to our cause and destroy this false state. We shall send in our spies and smuggle and supplies to help these groups sabotage key logistic points. Government offices, hospitals, army camps, anything possible to break the back of our enemies. Anything possible to bring us one step closer to liberating the lands of the Levant. Happy January. That's going to be an explosive year. Bomb the supply lines. It's time we utilize our two most devastating tools of war to liberation, artillery and air force. Both of which will cripple Israelites, Israelites with plans we have in store for them. With artillery, we should begin a new bombardment of Jewish highways and roads, crippling their efforts to better transport arms and men. In the meantime, our airport shall bomb the major ports, um, and their main source of foreign aid, as well as military bases, to better give us an advantage on the front. The Air Force will be the most difficult case, as the Israeli Air Force is rather strong, nevertheless. In our hearts, we know we shall trump over these cultist slimes. Fifth Arab-Israeli War. Well, fifth time's a charm, I guess. The Israeli Defense Minister has reported multiple airstrikes and bombings across Israel, with columns of the Iraqi armored divisions crossing into Israel into what is now evidently a war between them. This war has become one that both sides are preparing for, with the Iraq dominating Middle Eastern politics and Israel preparing for defense of their nation against Iraqi aggression. Saddam Hussein has proudly announced the final crusade against Zionism, calling for the destruction of the Israeli state and mobilizing tens of thousands for the war. Despite the denial of genocide, many foreign experts predict that an Iraqi victory would enable Saddam to heavily persecute and possibly deport many of the four million Jews populating the country. Already this war is painting itself out to be a destructive one, with heavy bombings of civilian and military areas, but the outcome of this war will be decisive and bloody. A bloody conflict and yet another bloodier war. Oh, look at this. It's the real defense forces, IDF. American support. Oh no, they don't have enough oil. Oh man. That's so terrible. Okay, we got rid of them. Hey, Palestinian Provisional Authority. Well, that was fast. Nasir Revenge. At long last, after all the wars, all the sacrifices, all the lives lost in pursuit of this grand victory, it is here. And we shall cherish this eternal victory for as long as their state lives. Our forefathers have been avenged. Our brothers shall hail a victory. Our people back at home cheer in the streets, and our image has been emboldened for all to see and cheer. And the following day, Saddam, along with most of his general staff, shall make a speech in Jerusalem, announcing the end of the conquest and the beginning to a grand new age for all the people of Iraq, commemorating all who died in pursuit of this crusade, and announcing the construction of a new status of himself right in the center of Jerusalem, for today is a grand day to celebrate. Oh, we can inv invade other Arab nations. Very nice. Integrate Golan Heights. Integrate Palestine. 
It's here that we've trials, for as long as the Zionists escape justice, but with their illegal occupation of Arab lands ending, they have nowhere else to run. I guess we'll see. But autism forever. Uh, it was unbelievable. Who could have thought the Arab states, divided by imperialists after betraying the opportunist Arab kings, were ever to break their chains? But it was done under Saddam Hussein's neo baathist doctrine and the genius of our generals. We have triumphed over the people that wanted to keep the Arab world divided for their interests. Um, they saw Arabs as nothing but people to exploit. The Zionist force is defeated, and all of these have been proven wrong. The United Arab Republics is ever stronger with increasing living standards and a strong command economy to guide it. The future for Arabs is bright. It was to down the broadest stability of the country, but it was a political theory of neo baathism that secured our future. Excerpt from a fifth grade history book. May the unity of Arab people last forever. The United Arab Republics, after many struggles, has prevailed and united the Arabs upon the new millennium. Thanks for playing the rock in Red Dusk. Oh, that must be the end of the mod. Look at that. Darn. Oh, we can invade Qatar. Ooh, oh, this is what I want. Yes. Invade Saudi Arabia. Yemen, which is dead. We just have to integrate them now. Yay. Invade Qatar. Yeah, that's not too bad. Bahrain. I always forget about those states. Yeah, why not? Centralization is only 8%. That's fine with us. Hey, that's been pretty good, though. Let's see how we do. We should do pretty darn well, I'd say. I get a lot of political power now. To hold two. Tel Aviv trials. Thousands of police officers, with the help of the military, have been located or located and captured multiple Israeli officers. Uh, or officials uh, stand trial. The crimes could not be underestimated enough with all the officials, ranging from low level bureaucrats to local governors and military commanders, that each played a part in the legal Zionist occupation of Palestine, of course. The judges didn't change their stance on the issue, even when the Zionist defendants claimed to have no part in any crimes. The trials finally ended after two weeks. With all the defendants being sentenced to death on multiple counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Finally, justice. <sighs> Tel Aviv trials. The long conflict between Arabs and the state of Israel had culminated with this capitulation of the country in the hands of Arab armies, however. The want for justice over a uh, prescribed injustices of the Israeli government over the occupation of Palestine remain. Today, the transitional government of Palestine announced the starting of multiple trials aimed at the former people accused of aiding the previous administration, who were swiftly picked up from their homes prior to special task forces. As trials continue, the harsh sentences given to the accused piled up, ranging from less sentences to executions. Human rights groups have denounced the trials due to biased jurisdiction and harsh sentences given, claims which both uh, the transitional government of Baghdad denounced. Is this justice or vengeance? Yes. I really want to evade these guys and see what happens with between us and these guys. Better fighters, yes. Better cast, yes. Oh. Right, we're going in. Holy shnikes. That's a lot of losses. We must have just overran them. Tanks can be so freaking strong. They just lost 80,000 people in a single, like, hour. Tanks are strong. Jesus Christ. Uh, you know what? I love my Arabness. Oh, is that? Oh. Well, oh, whatever. What is that? Invade Qatar, eh? Yeah, you must do both. Either one, doesn't really matter. Nope. The Yugoslav Wars. I thought we already got rid of this. Oh, they had separatists first, that's right. Alright, that makes sense. Let's just go in there. Nice job. Oh, and integrate. Oh, we can integrate them too. That'd be good. Oh, nice. Well, looking pretty darn good. Too bad we're not on our own faction. 
United Arab Republic has done very, very well. I'm very pleased with this. I kind of wish we went to go to war Turkey, but I guess not for this campaign. But I think I'm going to end it there. This is fantastic. There's a lot of fun playing Saddam Hussein. No wonder he wanted to do what he did in real life. He's looking old, though. He's a little old and tired. But his face is neo-botism, but I hope you enjoyed the campaign. And if you did, please consider leaving a like, because it does help me out. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.